Soon after his inauguration, the U.S. President Donald Trump summoned the world's most advanced chip maker, Taiwan's TSMC, to help with the U.S.'s chip ambitions. Now, it underlines Taiwan's importance for any country today trying to launch its semiconductor industry. So, how effective is India in courting Taiwan? Well, to understand Taiwan's role in India's semiconductor plants, we are joined by Ritika Pasi, a geoeconomic analyst and a former Ministry of Foreign Affairs fellow in Taiwan. And speaking to us from Bengaluru, we are joined by Pranay Kothastane, Deputy Director of the Takshashila Institution. Thank you both so much for uh, staying with us. Ritika, I want to just start with TSMC, which is currently breaking ground in Arizona for its uh, third fab, I believe. It's well known that India has made multiple efforts to court TSMC. Can you see it happening? Perhaps, and you know, we've we've heard that it most likely won't happen anytime soon, but is it possible that it could happen down the road? This is, I think, the question on the tip of everyone's tongue, especially here in India, because everyone is courting TSMC. I think the geopolitical landscape has changed so that the environment in which TSMC came up and built its competitive strength, that landscape no longer exists. It is still dependent on that landscape because this landscape was one that was defined by interdependence, principally between U.S., which, by the way, still accounts for the lion's share of the entire semiconductor industry, chip design inclusive, as well as the other parts of the supply chain, and offshoring. That played a key role in now the strength that we see in, in Asia and in Southeast Asia. So. When it comes to the question of TSMC specifically, at the moment, I think TSMC has bigger issues to navigate, principally its relationship with the U.S. Also, Japan is now looking like a, a second uh, core area of focus outside of Taiwan after the U.S. There is some conversation about investments in Southeast Asia, not so much TSMC specifically, but the broader Taiwanese semiconductor industry. So in the short run, I doubt that it will happen, but I think the geopolitical landscape is changing. It's introducing an element of uncertainty with respect to the US-China trade and tech rivalry. And of course, now Trump's 2.0, Trump 2.0, and his tariff policy, that uncertainty lends greater credence and legitimacy to this argument that India could be a good alternative, could be a safe, certain bedrock for semiconductor production, again, most likely in the OSAT first, but maybe eventually as a semiconductor chip maker too. Mm -hmm. Pranay, you want to add to that? Yeah, I think from the Indian perspective, TSMC is not the main focus and it shouldn't be either because Taiwan is not TSMC. There are UMC, there's TSMC, there is ITRI, there is uh, also, of course, the ASC and other OSAT players. So the focus of the Indian government policy, as I said, in the beginning was let's see, we'll give more incentives if you're doing really cutting edge chip production. This was when the policy was first launched in December 2021. By September 2022, the government realized that everyone is chasing TSMC. Mm -hmm. So they modified the policy such that even if you're doing uh, trailing edge stuff, you get the same amount of incentives. Even if you're doing an OSAT, you get the same amount of incentives as you would if you were making the most cutting edge chips. So that kind of thing changed the focus. And now the government policy is, and this is the stated intent that they want to build this uh, at the trailing edge first and not so much focus on the leading edge stuff. So that's why I think from the Indian perspective, ITRI, UMC, PSMC, these are okay. more important all right, so so let's go to the Taiwan perspective. Now, a few Indian companies, including state-owned Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, or HAL, has been accused of rerouting sensitive technologies to Russia since the Ukraine-Russia war began. Uh, there have been a few other issues that could deter Taiwanese companies. Can you, how, how much is that playing into the thought process of whether Taiwan companies will get involved in India's semiconductor drive, Pranay? I don't think that's a major concern as of now. Uh, the may, main issue is, again, if 
it be, it is profitable for these firms to invest in india and see the benefits of it coming soon enough right that's the major concern mm-hmm. if there are concerns regarding uh, leakage etc they, that can be addressed when the plant is being built up and uh, having cyber security regulations etc like the us and india are talking about uh, so there is precedent for that us and india already interacting a lot the russia thing is not the main uh, issue there are ways to mitigate it so i don't see why that can't be done in the india taiwan partnership as well okay so before we move on let's have a look at what india can learn from taiwan semiconductor journey and here's eric pang the director of the taiwan chamber of commerce in delhi he is also the international business development head of mumbai headquartered canscorp engineers private limited taiwan faced uh, several critical um, challenge that offer, you know, a cautionary lesson for India. First, uh, a talent drain. Um, you know, uh, in, in, in its early years, uh, Taiwan lost enge- engineer to uh, U.S. and Japan. So Indians should, uh, uh, you know, should, should know and plan to avoid this situation. Uh, second, infrastructure bottleneck. Um, water and power storage, uh, you know, uh, Trenton's fab uh, operation, uh, Taiwan built reliance uh, through uh, uh, the um, delicate uh, ut- utility uh, corridors. So India must uh, prioritize, you know, uh, stable and fab grade uh, utilities and uh, logistics. Ritika, uh, which phase is India currently navigating in its uh, semiconductor endeavor? It started in the 1980s, but that was mostly uh, military uh, for military purposes. Uh, where are we in, in commercial semiconductor production, if at all? So I think this entire conversation that we've been having has made it very clear that India's approach is not like what Singapore did, South Korea did, or Taiwan did. That India is reaching out to implement and buttress and build several parts of the semiconductor supply chain and value chain. I think there are three or four considerations or points that are important to note if anyone were to ask, you know, where does India stand currently? What phase it's in, you know? One, that it's targeting across the supply chain, right? Second, that it is investing heavily in chip design talents and to actually build indigenous intellectual property with that talent. Three, that it is supplementing this involvement with MOUs uh, with other countries, such as with Singapore, with US, with EU. Um, there's even interest, for example, that has been evinced from Malaysia in cooperating with, with India. Uh, it is also trying to develop clusters. So Gujarat, we've mentioned, there is also another state, Assam, where there is likely that a, a second cluster could emerge. And uh, individual states also are pursuing these MOUs and these engagements with um, strong companies and countries that have proven track record. And of course, the last part, which is the longer term investment, which is in skill and education. It's not just about skilling existing engineers and upgrading their capacities, but it is also inking, for example, university collaborations between Taiwan and India to train talent for the upcoming future. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pranay, you know, uh, China had the benefit of Taiwan talent and technology in the even in the earlier days. Uh, but how much how, how likely is it that India could catch up with Taiwan's help with China's semiconductor industry? Yeah. So, for example, in the design segment, already uh, India has a big uh, capability uh, st- structure there. So, for example, all top 25 semiconductor design firms by revenue have their R&D centers in the town that I am living in, right? So, uh, or, and they do significant amount of work, uh, intellectual property work. So, that is a segment where I would say India is at par with China in terms of the talent and ingredients that exist here. Where China beats India is that many of the products that are finally made by these engineers are Chinese products, where as in the Indian case, they will be called American products because the intellectual property finally belongs to the US firms here. So that's the challenge that India has to 
can you convert these uh, engineers to into entrepreneurs can you get them to invest uh, and can you get foreign investment in such that they can build new architectures new products so there i am quite optimistic that india will be able to do that it's just like uh, the my mental model is india's hardware sector is 10 years behind india software sector early 10 years ago india didn't have any software products but now india has many software products which are used uh, in india and some in the world as well so the same thing could probably happen in hardware as well we are now seeing that inflection point where uh, there is investment coming in people uh, investor community and vc capital is starting to flow in in hardware and the big thing that has happened is downstream assembly is also started in india right so electronics assembly by foxconn and others for apple has begun this was not there in the previous attempts so now that there is some local demand also which is making firms like other osat firms see that you know it makes sense to also make the chip here because the phone and other things are also being made here you know so that kind of thing is now starting to uh, begin here i don't think india will be able to uh, beat china in like 5 10 years again this is a 20 year game uh, the way i think of it is Uh, it's a two decade game the minister uh, has also mentioned this so if they are looking at it we'll build over time and it's not about beating china it's about india being able to do something which is great uh, and that will itself uh, help india's economic growth prospects we're we're just about running out of time here but rithika let me give you the last word here before we close off sure I think when it comes to the semiconductor industry it cannot be denied that there are more players today than there were before and this is this agency by other actors by new actors is a train that has left the station and it's only going to grow whether countries and companies succeed or not that of course remains to be seen um i want to draw this distinction i think which is important when we talk about the semiconductor industry this question that you just raised right now how close is india to challenging china's uh status right now there are two parts to why countries are investing in semiconductors one is tech sovereignty we understand that tech today is the driver for long term growth and development ai is now being called the new general purpose technology we live in the silicon age anything that involves computing and electronics essentially depends on chips so there is this drive to uh, to create conditions in for long term growth and development so one is tech sovereignty and the other then is power projection because we understand that the semiconductor industry is a strategic sector and this power play right that is happening is far deeper than you know prognostications of when any one company or country can outpace the other because what is absolutely key to understand the nature of the tech, nature of technology itself chips have been following moore's law they have been increasing their capacities and capabilities doubling up every 2 years when it comes to ai ai development is accelerating at a pace of 6 months doubling every 6 months so i think these also need to um be part of the consideration when we talk about who's going to come out on top in the semiconductor uh, game yes you've set us up nicely for another conversation there but thank you so for now thank you both so much thank you rithika pasi a geo economist analyst and 2024 mofa fellow and pranay kotsatsane deputy director at the takshashila institution for joining our discussion today how important do you think it is for a country to have its own chip manufacturing capacity why not just buy from taiwan well leave your thoughts in the comments below and click the video beside me for a discussion on whether india can leverage taiwan's expertise to become a global chip powerhouse now if you don't want to miss more stories on tech and finance from taiwan subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell